So let me read you a message from NVP, and they are a store, uh, a tiny store, and they actually made a YouTube video showing that they are a legit store that runs events. And they have been quite negative as to Magic the Gathering, unlike Alpha Investment, who is extremely positive about the outcome of Magic the Gathering, even though his patrons have been effed over for the last two years. And some of them are waking up. Some of them are still heavy asleep, right? These Timmies, right? Uh, but eventually, these Timmies will go broke, and they will shake their fist angrily at the sky at probably me, right? Not Alpha Investment, right? How dare, you know, you know, I just didn't buy enough. That was the problem. Um, no, but this is a real letter, and I think it's actually a very, very interesting letter uh, from... This is how most local game stores feel, not Alpha Investment. Alpha Investment is still making millions of dollars from his patrons a year, probably tens of millions of dollars pumping sorcery, One Piece now, Meta Zoo, right? Meta Zoo, wow. Talk about a guy who doesn't give a shit about a game. He was opening Meta Zoo native packs, supposedly a hundred plus dollars, right? Uh, I made a video about that. That's not true. Uh, the liquidity of MetaZoo native is almost zero. Uh, and he opened one of the chase cards, one of the most valuable cards in the game. And uh, he didn't know. He just didn't know. Because that's how much he plays the game. Zero. All right, let's talk about this uh, email before I get too angry. Mark Market updates. The manufacturer, Wizard of the Coast, pummeled 2023. Of every possible thing imaginable, markets now have responded accordingly. CMM continues to tank. Wizard Coast responded by limiting Wilds of Aldrin, but that wasn't enough to convince buyers who responded by placing much smaller pre-orders for Lost Caverns of Ixlon before full spoiler, spoilers were out. Wizard of Coast, are, are, of course, already knew they had significantly power creep uh, Lost ca Caverns of Ixlon, and could see the combination of CMM gutting and woe drifting, so they froze most woe restocks and publicly announced sudden production issues resulting in LCI limits and delays, etc. That resulted in woe stopping its descent and LCI prices holding then climbing up for the moment. So this is Rudy's videos about Ixlon. It's a manipulated demand, guys. They will flood the market. They're just waiting on it. Doubling down, Wizard of Coast has now apparently told all distributors that they intend to make Magic a collectible game again. So they will only allow suppliers to place one order before spoilers for the upcoming Ravnica Remastered and then no restocks will be offered through any channels. This is just excellent. We have of course been buying up marshmallows for the for all the unsold units. Wizard of Coast will likely have to bonfire in order to keep their promise. So here we are, about to head down another remaster road with all signs indicating that Wizard of Coast printed just as much here as they did with Dominaria Remastered, which we remember had Force of Will, Vampiric Tutor, Urza's Incubator, and more. And both those collectors and draft units are still being fire sold a year later at huge losses. How to sell our VR then? Well, force suppliers to buy all in before spoilers are spoiled. Huh. A curious, way to, a curious way to treat your partners. This assumes they will stuff RVR with as much power and reprints as they can, but will players buy a second time? Cynthia, wait, I have an idea. Let's post some to Amazon publicly before even suppliers cost for a while. Even below suppliers cost for a while. That seems like a good idea i.e. RVR draft boxes were 135 the first week of October, 128 if you use your 5% Amazon card, not kidding. So how much woe and LCI is the manufacturer holding back at this moment? Will they really burn their unsold RVR? Will betting it finds its way into the market accidentally or via semantic workaround? Wizard of Coast Amazon sale data has shown that there is huge impulse U.S. buyer base out there. If their units can be seen on the same page as candy or a Pokemon DVD or any other quick and easy entertainment item, they are seeing those new uninformed buyers will pay much higher prices than longer-term Magic players, and they outnumber them by a ways. 
Of course, Wizard of the Coast wants to sell to both groups and charge them each the most they are willing to pay for the same product. Is all that possible with AI e economics? Maybe. But per that model, there is only one thing that could do it. Massive power creep to each new set. See Yu-Gi-Oh! and a, a million variants. See Pokemon sports cards. If all the above holds, old classic power cards holding 20 plus dollars will be a thing of the past. Only newer power crep cards will see those up arrows, and only temporarily until they too are power crept out. Make sure to still have one or two units be very limited so as to spike up each year so you can point Wall Street to them. Just hope they don't click see related products. Oh man, on their Amazon page. This is brutal, but honest. This is the shit that Alpha Investment will never tell you, but it's honest. It's like as somebody who owns a store, this is exactly the way I felt. But I didn't do the volume that I could actually speak about it in this way. Alpha Investment knows this too. Maybe anything printed between 2015 and 2025 becomes a curse word in the investing community eventually. Exactly. That's exactly what I've been saying this whole money effing time, Alpha Investments. This makes the MTG buy and hold model a relic of the past. At best, you could try to play the short-term game to arbitrage power creeping. Did everyone catch that even Double Masters 2022 has quietly fallen under original cost? That was a powerful set, my dudes. Double Masters. Oh, my God. More likely to come. Thankfully, Pokemon still has not decided to squeeze all the water out of their sponge yet. So players are still doing decent there. Also of important note, our longtime Magic buyers is that Wizard of the Coast recently revoked MVP's WPN status. Wizard of the Coast has long since not appreciated our supplying of certain information to buyers, as well as our blunt appraisals of their shenanigans. They eventually gave up on subtle indirect threats when they saw we didn't stop and recently put our store under WPN re-vertification, claiming it had nothing to do with anything other than a standard random review. They tried finding issues with our license or paperwork, but of course everything was 100% accurate and up to date. So in the end, they gave up and just arbitrarily said in effect, Oh well, we determined the video of your store feels cluttered and has too many posters, etc. So we're not going to reapprove your store. Copy below is the video link. Everyone can see for themselves. It's a pretty average store. Better than some, worse than some, but easily fine in the events we've hosted for 10 plus years thousands of players the fact that we are improved tournament store for every other major game conveniently escapes them i.e if there was an actual authenticity or equality to which the coast claims then they revoked have to revoke wpn for over half the wpn stores across the u.s and warship yeah this is this is just stop buying guys like i said a million times rudy chan will never tell you the honest truth about it the only way to get to um, all these people, Cynthia and Chris Scott, is to stop buying their shit. You know, just don't buy seal boxes, don't invest. You know, I've, I've been boycotting Magic for the last six months. No one gives a damn, right? They're just still buying more <laughs> Masters. Guys, Rudy Chan is a problem. Because he will promote, and he won't tell you the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. Rudy Chan will never tell you it.